Sonic Origins is out, and you know what that means. Add another copy of Sonic 1 to the pile. Is it Wednesday already? Ah yes, another compilation of classic Sonic games. Exactly what I needed right about now. It's not like we have enough of these games already. Hey, it's been a few months. We're due for another port of Sonic 2. Now I know what you're thinking. Do I really need another copy of these games? Yes. I know there are dozens of ways to play these classic Sonic games, but I just couldn't help myself. So how do I justify myself for this purchase? It has animated cutscenes? Shut up and take my money! I know, I'm a sheep. I try anything that has Sonic in it. No. Okay. Well enough meandering. Let's see what this compilation has to offer. This collection contains remastered versions of the four main classic Sonic games. Sonic 1, 2, CD, and 3 and Knuckles, because f Sonic Spinball. Each of these games have been updated with tons of quality of life features. Widescreen support, smoother frame rates, and the removal of lives certainly makes the experience much more enjoyable. The first three games are pretty much the same Christian Whitehead mobile ports that you all know and love. Except now, they're finally on console and PC. Thank God. You won't believe how annoying it was being stuck using touch controls for so long. I wanted buttons, damn it! And I didn't want to use a Bluetooth controller every time I boot these games up. Thankfully, we finally have a more convenient way of playing these games. And they even finally re-released Sonic 3 and Knuckles after so many years. We haven't seen it since Sonic Classic Collection on the DS. And it looks glorious. This is all amazing, what's not to like? Ouch. Yeah, that price tag is a bit too steep. 40 bucks for four Sonic games that are about three decades old is a bit excessive. And $5 DLC to add more missions, music, and character animations in the main menu? What the hell is this? But whatever. They still got my money. I know. I'm part of the problem. So what makes this collection so different anyway? Each game can be played in a variety of ways. You can play them in their original form on a 4x3 aspect ratio. But, you could also play them in the new anniversary mode. You can enjoy these games in widescreen and gain the ability to use the drop dash from Sonic Mania. They also replaced 1-ups with coins, which you can use to purchase items in the museum to get artwork, movies, and music. And get this, you can retry special stages. I love this. No more scouring around for more special rings or waiting until the next level to try again. You just need to pay up using one of your coins. Capitalism is a bit but it works. The game even auto-saves your progress constantly. You can easily quit and continue from your last checkpoint. There are boss rush modes, leaderboards, and they even added a mirror mode. This is really messing with my head. You can go left? I love the new additions in this compilation. And the amount of fan service here is out of this world. Literally. I mean, look at this world map. I love how it shows us the setting where each game takes place. They even reference 3D Blast and... Spinball. Ugh. I just threw up a little. And the cutscenes. My gosh, the cutscenes. They're so beautifully animated. I just can't help but admire how well they portray each character and gives us further insight on the game's story. God, I wish they made a full actual cartoon like this one day. And finally, they added a story and mission mode. The story mode is pretty much a marathon of all four games back to back. Mission mode, on the other hand, is a blast. You play in a variety of different challenges, ranging from defeating certain enemies to completing levels while fulfilling certain conditions. They can get really brutal. This has to be some of the hardest things I've ever done in a classic Sonic game. I love the added challenge here and how it breathes new life to games that i played for so many years. The amount of new additions here are great. It adds so much replayability, definitely more compared to other collections. Now that we reviewed these new additions, let's take a closer look at each of these games and how much they've changed, if at all. I've gone over most of these games in previous videos, so I'm going to be brief and highlight any notable differences. Sonic 1 is pretty much exactly like his mobile counterpart. You can play as Tails and Knuckles, it has a debug mode, new alternate paths, and you have the option to get 7 Chaos Emeralds as opposed to 6 if you input a certain code in the level select. But other than that, it's still the same Sonic 1 you all know and tolerate. Sonic 2 is no different. Most of the quality of life changes applies here as well. You do get to keep your rings after you complete a special stage, and you can also gain access to the cut level hidden palace zone if you fall into the pit of doom in Mystic Cave Zone. And you can play as Knuckles and Tails as a duo because who needs Sonic? This is still my favorite 2D Sonic game, and I feel like this is the definitive way of playing this game. Sonic CD is 
Sonic CD. That means it's mediocre. Jokes aside, despite its numerous design issues, it's still an enjoyable ride. This is probably the best way to play this game. You can still change between the US and Japanese soundtracks. It looks so vibrant and colorful, and it runs smooth as butter. But you can't play as Knuckles here. So forget all the nice things I've said. This game is irredeemable. And finally, there's Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I won't be going too deep into this game since I'll be making a dedicated video on this game sometime in the future. But after so long, we now finally have an official remaster. It looks and runs beautifully. And they even added the big arm boss fight at the end of the Sonic 3 section. This was cut in the original game. Unfortunately, you don't have the option to play these games separately. But that's not too much of an issue. The game is much better together anyway. And the soundtrack? Ew. Yep, a few tracks changed here because of licensing issues from a certain king of pop. So they reused some of the beta tracks that were used on the PC version years ago with lackluster results. This is honestly the point of contention for most people. Personally, I was never a big fan of the original tracks for Carnival Night and Launch Base Zone. So I don't mind the new music here. But Ice Cap, on the other hand, is really disappointing. This used to be one of my favorite tracks in the whole game, but they gave us this instead. I mean, I get it. Copyright's a bit. But this just ain't it. So much for no copyright in the universe can stop you. They even changed Super Sonic's theme, which I vastly prefer. You just can't imagine how annoying it was hearing the game's invincibility theme on repeat. I felt like I was gonna go crazy. Many are not too fond of this rendition, comparing this to Sonic 4, which honestly in my eyes is a compliment. Have you heard the game's soundtrack? A lot of them are great, but I digress. Other than that, this is still Sonic 3 in all its glory, and it's still one of Sonic's best 2D adventures. However, despite all the praise I've been giving Sonic Origins, there has been a lot of controversy surrounding it. Obviously, many people are upset by the change in music in Sonic 3, but people have met with tons of performance issues or glitches as well. I personally didn't encounter any game-breaking bugs. It was a smooth experience the whole way through. Kind of reminds me of a certain other port. Maybe I'm just lucky. <laughs> Whether the issues are present or blown way out of proportion, this is still unacceptable. These games have been around for decades. We shouldn't be having these issues. Most of them probably stem from Sega's decision to add a DRM called Denuvo in the PC version. This program is infamous for creating performance issues, so why add it? It's not like that's gonna stop people from cracking the game. But there are issues plaguing the console versions as well. Only thing I've noticed is some issues with some of the game's physics and hit detection. The drop dash doesn't work as well in Sonic 1. Originally, you can change directions on the fly in midair. But here specifically, you're stuck going in one direction. Guess it really is only one way, and not another. In Sonic 2, I feel like the pinball physics feel a bit different. And I know my Sonic 2, I can tell if something is off. I've also gone through walls on a couple of occasions, but I've done that in previous ports as well. So I'm not sure if that's specifically an Origins issue. The museum is cool and all, but I've noticed issues with the music playlist, particularly with Knuckles Chaotix. They mislabeled some of these songs. This isn't Dorian's Summer. How dare they? I know that these issues can easily be fixed in a future patch, but really, they shouldn't be here to begin with. And I'm not blaming the developers for this. There were reports that the developers were working in strict conditions, and it was Sega themselves who was responsible for creating new bugs that weren't there to begin with when the game was submitted. How did you mess this up? There's also a few other nitpicks I have with this collection. It sucks that they delisted previous versions of these games on digital storefronts. You have to buy them all together now. You can't purchase them separately. Sure, this is definitely the superior version of these games, but the option would have been nice. I need more copies of Sonic 2, damn it! I also really wish there were more games in this collection. Even though I despise Sonic Spinball, I don't see why they couldn't add this or Mean Bean Machine or 3D Blast as well. Heck, try adding Knuckles Chaotix. That game never got re-released. This would definitely help justify that price tag. All I'm saying is, they should have added Sonic 4 on here. And is it just me? But did they lie in one of their trailers? They mentioned that they're adding new playable characters here. Yet, it's still the same three. The only difference that I saw is that they added Knuckles and Tails as a pair. Where's Amy, Mighty, or Ray? They would have definitely added new light into this game. Sonic Origins is a great compilation that helps provide a definitive way of playing these classics, but is plagued by numerous issues and controversial decisions. Even though my experience was mostly smooth and positive, the same may not apply for everyone. I'm sure once they iron out these issues, it can improve dramatically. But please, stop making a habit off of this. 
What's so hard about re-releasing old games? You messed up twice now. First Sonic Colors Ultimate, and now this. Seriously, Sega. You shouldn't rush these games to meet a deadline. I know it was Sonic's anniversary, but just take your time. Wait until it's complete, rather than just rushing it out the door and fixing it later. I just hope Sonic Frontiers doesn't go down this route. I'm still hoping for more remasters in the future, preferably in the 3D variety, or perhaps games that are stuck on other platforms. Just make sure to give them the love and attention that they deserve, so that a whole new generation of gamers can enjoy them for years to come. <sighs> we're gonna get another Sonic 1 port, aren't we? Sonic Genesis Remastered! Now with extra screen crunch! I just wanted to take the time and say thank you so much for helping me gain over 500 subscribers. The amount of support I've been getting has been crazy. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope that you'll enjoy what I have planned in the near future. Well, that's another Sonic game down. It's probably gonna be a while until Sonic Frontiers comes out. I played a little too much Sonic lately. Maybe I should try to play something else in the meantime. Yahoo? Hmm. Oh, f me.